Today's video is going to be all about spraying chalk type paints with an HVLP paint sprayer. Let's talk about the sprayer real quick. It's got a 20 ounce hopper and it's gravity fed. The minimum requirements to spray paint with this sprayer, this is information for your air compressor, is 6 CFM at 40 PSI. It recommends a 30 gallon air compressor for continuous spray, 7 to 29 gallon air compressor for intermittent spray, and a 1 to 6 gallon compressor is not recommended. Some of the specifications on the box for the sprayer. It operates between 20 and 70 PSI depending on what product you're spraying. Obviously, like we talked about, the 6 CFM at 40 PSI, and then 7 to 10 fluid ounces per minute. It'll spray a lot of paint out of there really fast, and you get a really nice, neat result. The nozzle size on this particular sprayer is 1.4 millimeters, and then 20 ounce hopper. And then the air inlet is a quarter inch by 18. This is the piece we're talking about on the air inlet. This is your coupler to the air compressor hose. The sprayer does not come with that, so if you're not set up to spray with that, make sure you get the proper fittings. Let's go ahead and unbox this. So when you open up your box, you're gonna have your 20 ounce hopper, and then the filter usually comes in a separate little baggie, and then you get this little brush for cleaning out your gun. So let's get the filter out. We don't need the brush right now. If you need more information, here's a bunch of instructions on how to use it and clean it. So this particular gun, usually runs between 10 and $20 at Harbor Freight. You can get them for 20 on Amazon if you don't have a Harbor Freight close to you. So let's assemble this. It doesn't have the filter in. I see lots of people make the mistake of putting the filter in like that. That's not gonna filter anything for you. What you wanna do is you put it in with this little ball down in the bottom. And then you screw your hopper on. And I like to just hand tighten this. You can obviously get a wrench out and tighten it down really well, but sometimes you gotta pull this hopper off to clean it out. So I just, I just hand tighten. It's sufficient, I've never had it leak on me. We're gonna get to spraying in just a minute, but I wanted to show you some quick parts of the gun real fast. This knob on the back of the gun here controls your paint flow. You adjust it in for less paint, out for more paint. So if you find that you're not getting enough paint down through your airflow, you wanna adjust this out so that you have more paint. And then you can lock it in place with this separate nut here. It's spring loaded, so careful when you're unscrewing it. Next thing is air regulation. This will regulate how much air goes through your gun. Now, some people like to put a separate regulator on the actual airline, and that's great. That works really well. For chalk paints, I haven't found that that's necessary. They're typically a flat paint, no gloss or anything. So the air pressure is important, but it's not critical at this point. Adjust your airflow here until you get a nice good spray, and we'll go over that a little bit more when we're actually spraying. This knob here on the gun controls your spray pattern. F turn it forward for a really wide spray pattern that kind of mists out, or if you want like a narrow pattern that's more like a can of spray paint, turn it all the way back and that'll give you a real tight pattern. You can spray real small area, but it's going to be max paint flow as well. You're gonna get a lot of paint out really fast, so careful you don't get runs on that setting. Let's say you want a vertical spray setting. You want, you want your spray to go in a sheet like this direction as you go across your piece. You're gonna loosen up this nut here, turn the nozzle sideways, and then tighten that back up, and that'll give you vertical spray. If you want it horizontal spray pattern, you just turn it like that. So horizontal spray pattern like this, vertical spray pattern looks like that. And I usually use the horizontal spray pattern. It works better for me. You might prefer the vertical spray pattern. A lot of it depends on what you're painting and the angle of the spray you have to use to get in and paint your piece. Paint strainers. I get these in a hundred pack. They're 110 to 120 mesh. They also sell them at Harbor Freight. They're about $6 for a hundred disposable ones, so really inexpensive. For a long time, I just used a mesh kitchen strainer that you would use to get the water off your vegetables, and that worked well too. It's important to strain your paint so you get the best flow from the spray gun without getting any clogs. 
So chalk type paints, we traditionally spray two types of paints. We've got the Fairy Chalk Mother. It's a traditional chalk type paint. And then we also spray DIY clay-based paint, which the clay base makes it very thick. I add a little more water to this and I'll go over that in just a moment. We're working with a 20 ounce hopper here. With traditional chalk type paints like the Fairy Chalk Mother, what I do is three parts paint to one part water. So 15 ounces of paint to five ounces of water. And that's a good mixture, a good ratio. I've found that I don't get a lot of runs, but the paint still sprays really well and even. If you don't have anything to measure that with, there are measurement tabs right here along the hopper. So I usually just mark with my marker 15 ounces and fill it up with paint to that mark and then fill it up to the bottom of the threads here with water. Then I'll put my lid on and I'll mix that up right here in the spray gun. On the top of the hopper here is a little air vent. You wanna make sure that that stays clean and unplugged. If you're not getting good paint flow through your gun, it's probably because this got plugged up and you're creating a vacuum inside this hopper and it's not releasing the paint down into the airstream. I usually keep a gun for about six months. This one is about six months old, so it's on its way out. But I'm gonna show you how I clean them if they do need cleaned in between. I usually keep two or three different guns, one strictly for sealer, one for dark paints, and one for white paints. And I don't clean my guns out in between between, I just leave them filled up with paint because I use them almost every day. If you're only going to be using your spray gun once a week, clean that out so everything doesn't get dried and clogged up. A quick easy way to clean these is just run some water through them. In the winter months I'll clean them at the sink, but in the summertime when it's warm I just clean them right out here on the grass. So all I've done is I got the hopper full of just regular water. I'm going to hook it back up to my air. Give it a couple good shakes. And then I'm gonna spray until that whole hopper is empty. Once all the water's out, I'm gonna fill it up again. And this time I'm gonna clean out this air vent. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my finger in front of the nozzle and that's gonna force air and water back up through the hopper and out the top of this air vent. That also blows anything that's stuck in the filter back up into the hopper. I can just shake this up and drop it right on out of there. Now at this point, I'm just gonna run one more hopper of water through it and it's completely clean, ready to go. It takes about five minutes to clean it like this. Time to get paint in the hopper. I've just got my strainer here and dropping the DIY white swan right in there. I've got some chairs I'm gonna paint and let that strain on through. I'm gonna go until I have 15 ounces in the hopper. Just let that strain down. The DIY paint is thick, so it takes a little longer to strain, but it will go down. I've got 15 ounces of paint in the DIY clay-based paint. Now I'm gonna add five ounces of water. Because it's thicker, I will add an extra couple of tablespoons to the top of that. And that fills my hopper up quite a bit, but there's enough room at the top that it can still breathe, so I'm not worried about it. I'm just gonna use a rag over the breathe valve to keep any paint that might accidentally slosh out out of the breathe valve while I shake this up. The DIY paint is all natural, but that doesn't mean you wanna be breathing it in when you're spraying. It will come out in a mist, so make sure you're wearing some sort of respirator lung protection so that that's not getting down into your lungs. You don't want paint in your lungs. The sprayer is particularly great for large pieces and we've done a ton of those on the channel with the spray gun, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to get up inside of something like this bread box. Chairs are also one of the more difficult things to paint just because there's so many angles and things and places you have to paint. So I'm gonna show you how to spray a chair real quick too. Now this piece here has already been painted white but it's got some bleed through issues. We've shellacked it and we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get this all white, nice and uniform, get it looking clean and crisp. With the flat chalk type paints and the DIY clay based paint, it doesn't really matter if you spray all willy-nilly all over the place. It's good and it's gonna help with runs if you spray nice and even and consistent, but because it's flat, you won't see the lines from going crazy if you have to do that to get coverage on a piece. 
we picked up this little wicker tray thrifting and it would probably take 10 or 15 minutes to paint all this wicker and get full coverage. I'm gonna leave the video in real time so that you can see how fast this covers. I'm gonna spray the bottom first and then we'll spray the top. So I often get asked what kind of compressor I have. Now this compressor is not very old, it's just over here in all of its overspray glory hiding out in the corner with the forgotten yard tools. But it's a 60 gallon Husky compressor and here are the stats on it. You can see it generates quite a bit more air than is needed and Jamie and I can actually both be spraying at the same time or she can be upholstering and I can be spraying. It'll run more than one tool at the same time. If you love hand painting chairs, that's great. There's a special place for you in painter heaven. I do not particularly love hand painting chairs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this upside down, paint the bottom first, and then I'm gonna show you kind of some vertical sprays and things like that and give you some tips on things to watch out for when you're spraying a vertical surface or something like this. When I'm spraying this, I'm not giving it a full pull on the trigger. I'm just barely opening it up enough for the paint to let down into the airstream. That way I'm not getting tons of overspray because the spray pattern is gonna be wider than this little chair rung. Most chalk type paints and uh, especially the DIY clay based paint that I used on these projects are porous so they require a sealer so that water won't just wipe them off. I've got Sweet Pickens top coat. We like to spray the top coat because it's a matte sealer so it's going to give us a sheen a lot like the flat paint already has. Most of the paints and sealers that I spray, I spray at about 65 to 75 psi. Every now and then I'll turn that pressure down, but for these chalk paints and the matte paints, I'm not worried about a misty finish because they end up with a flat finish. The only time I ever worry about atomizing the paint too much is if I'm using like a glossier sheen, uh, either like a semi-gloss or a full gloss. I get asked quite a bit if I think spraying paint takes more paint than brushing it. My answer for that is no. A, you added water to it, and B, I got nice even coverage with white paint in one coat. All total, I used about 11 ounces of paint and about eight ounces of sealer to do all three of these projects and get them completely finished. If you wanna get a similar look on your projects, be sure you're heading over to jamierayvintage.com to get the paint and sealers for a one-of-a-kind look for your project. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Total time spent painting and sealing the project, not including dry time, took me about 20 minutes to do all three pieces. Hit the subscribe button.